Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Working on a Michael Kelly mandolin today. I was not going to film this uh, because it just seemed like a routine deal again, a setup. But there's a bunch of issues on this mandolin and I just thought I'd point out a few of them. First of all, she's complaining that the strings are too high off the fretboard. Well, that's because of these gigantic frets. And it's, you know, when you've got those tall frets, I'm telling you, it's like, you know, it's it's like playing a cheese cutter, as somebody said. It uh, you're pushing down on that fret, and your finger's still not to the fretboard because it's so high up, and they just just feel way more harsh to me. So I'm going to talk to her about these giant frets and see if we can reduce those. The negative of that is it's got all this inlay, and so taking the out could chip some of that inlay. I hope not. I mean, it's just, you know, one nightmare after another. Then this uh, has a pickup through the bridge, and you can see here I've taped it all together to hold it all together. This is the top of the bridge. I was hoping to put a deer antler saddle on this to wake this thing up, but this piece here is, you know, just sitting on top of there. Now, that makes me think maybe I could it's a radius too, by the way, which I'm not crazy about either on a mandolin, but it is. And I could radius one of my antler saddles and then cut it short like this and set it on here. Assuming these holes line up, I might try that. So that's another issue. She also wants this tailpiece uh, replaced with a different tailpiece. And I can't blame her on that. I, these tailpieces look like they'd be good tailpieces and they look like they'd be easy and all that, but they're kind of a pain. The, the posts are straight up and down. If the posts were leaning back so that the strings would stay down at the bottom, uh, but the, the strings always walk up these posts and and they're just hard to get on and off too. Cause it, it looks like it should be easy, but they're just not that simple. Especially when you've already got other strings on. If one would break in the middle, it's kind of a pain. So I don't blame her for wanting to change that either. I did tighten up the truss rod. The neck had quite a bit of under bow under string tension. So those are the issues facing us here and we'll see how we're gonna tackle them. The very first thing I noticed when I took the first screw out of the tailpiece is look how long that screw is for a tailpiece screw. Oh my gosh, here's, here's standard tailpiece screws. It's, it's three times the size as one of those. Well, obviously it's secure. It's not going to come out, come off. But gee whiz, it's you know about overkill. I mean, that screws actually. Well, it's 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 not quite as big as the tail pin screw as the uh, strap button screw, but it's it's the same length. It's the the uh, strap button screw is a little bit bigger diameter, which you would expect. But they're the same length, and that, that's just crazy. I've never seen that before on a tailpiece like that. I've seen some pretty crazy screws in tailpieces, don't get me wrong, but on a production model um, coming from the factory, I just can't imagine putting screws in that are this long. It just doesn't make sense. Obviously, it won't come loose. It's secure. But now, putting the uh, other tailpiece on there, we're going to have to fill these holes, assuming the holes line up anyway. They may not even line up, but, but if they do line up, we're going to have to fill these holes before we put the other smaller screws in. I guess we could just put the same screws back in, but I don't think they'll even fit through that other tailpiece. It's never simple, you know, when you think you just got a simple project, they're just never simple. I could use a screw gun, sure, but you also t run the risk of having that slip off and scratch something, so for the little bit of extra work, it's to me it's just worth it. Of course, your screwdriver can slip off too, but I kind of hold that in place. I like this tailpiece in the sense that it's very heavy. That's a good thing because it gives you good sustain. So from that perspective, I like this tailpiece better than this tailpiece because this is a light stamped metal tailpiece. But changing the strings on these are kind of a pain in the neck. Let's just see if this lines up with the holes. If the holes do line up, we might just try to reuse the same screws because that would make sense. Well, actually, believe it or not, they do. Well, pretty close anyway. 
Yeah, I think they do line up. Now, the problem is that these holes are not big enough. So, I think I'll re-drill these holes out bigger, just big enough to get these screws through, and I'll just put the same long screws back in there, and then we know it's secure. Kind of a pain in the neck, but I think that's probably better than filling the holes and putting in little short screws, considering what it had in there before. One of the situations you find yourself in is dealing with other builders' messes. And as I'm trying to center this up and, and put it, you can see I have it centered on the hole that was already there for the end pin. And I've pretty much got those holes about the same too, although I think I have them offset just a little bit that way, which because I was trying to get in this center line. If you can just look at this this edge of the tape, that's the center line right there, this edge. Ignore the rest of the tape, just this edge. That's the center line of the top, if you're going right down the center line of the top. And you can see that this tailpiece is set that way quite a bit. Okay, it's set that way, I would say it's off center by a good eighth inch, if not more. Now when you put the when you put the straight edge on here, you can see that I'm, and this is not a very good ruler, but it's got bigger markings. You can see that it's off by more than a quarter of an inch to the edge. More, it's not three six or five sixteenths, but it's more than a quarter of an inch. When you measure on this side, it's actually less than a quarter of an inch. So it needs to go that way more. Well, it's already that way past center. You know, it's just going to look like heck if I put it much further. It's going to look, you know, I just don't like that. Now, I know some people would never notice that, but it bugs me because that's the center line of the top. So, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to put it back where close to where it was and call that good enough because you know, it's going to be a little bit off, but you're just kind of, you know, splitting the difference is, is re really what it amounts to. It'll line up good enough with the strings that, you know, the bridge can move a little bit to take up the compensation there. But if I move it much further, it's really going to look odd. So, I don't know. Just really hard to say what to do with something like that. I taped it in place so that I could mark these holes without it moving on me. I decided to fill the holes because rather than use those really long screws, and the main reason is that those long screws have a big head on them and they wouldn't sit flush. They would be standing up proud of the surface here by quite a bit and I just thought that would look like heck and feel bad too. So I decided to go ahead and use the screws that came with the tailpiece, but that means I have to redrill all of these. So I'm going to redrill those now. Well, I talked with the customer, and he agrees we should change these frets out, and uh, I really think that's a good idea. If you want it to feel like it's got low action, you, it'll never feel that way with these tall frets. Um, if you're a real high-end picker, you know, a lot of the high-end pickers like the taller frets because they feel like they can just barely lightly touch it and keep going faster, you know. That may be an advantage. I don't even find that as an advantage, but my style of playing is not the best anyway. So, there you go. Everybody's different. Everybody has an opinion on those things. But uh, anyway, that's what we're doing. We're going to lower these. We're going to get smaller frets in here. We'll probably scallop this out a little bit further too because there's no point in putting these decoration frets back in there and we'll just scallop that part out. So it's going to look a little different when we're uh, finished here. Before I pull frets, I take a wet towel like this and I just soak 
right around the frets. If you if you rub it back and forth, the water uh, will suck right into the edge of those frets like that. It'll. I don't have. This is not real super wet, but it's kind of like a washboard action, and it'll get that water right down under that fret. I've learned that over the years that that's the best way to do it. And that's what you want to do is you want to get the water right down in under the fret there where it goes down that tang and then that'll soften those fibers and when you pull this out you'll get a lot less tear out. At least that's the game plan. The other factor is you never know there could be other issues. The, the wood itself, if it's you know, certain pieces of wood will just chip a lot worse than other pieces will. So give it a shot and see what happens. We'll start back here on the little short frets because those are going to get pulled out and scalloped anyway. Came out pretty clean. You can see the water down around the, the fret slot. See how the water's gotten into that fret slot? That's what you want. And you can see it there very clearly how the water is under that where that fret was. And by rubbing it back and forth like that, that's, you'll get it in there very good that way. I've tried paint brushes and other ways of applying it, but I've learned that rubbing it back and forth is by far the best way. Now here's the first one in the pearl. I'm a little concerned about that because of the pearl. I told the customer that this could potentially chip out some pearl and he said he's okay with that. He doesn't play much with the pearl. <laughs> Looking good and you can see all that water under there. There's just a lot of water coming out from under that fret. It's amazing how it gets that water down in there. the very last one chipped a little bit but not bad not enough to worry about we can always fill it and dye it it's not gonna you'll never really notice it there's another little chip there I see too and there's probably another one so yeah I see some more so there's there's more chipping there than I thought but not not a terrible amount I mean you, you can always be a lot worse so we'll get ready to start putting the frets back in there now but first, well actually I do like to put the frets in there first and then scallop this. That's my preferred method for doing it because that's the way I'm used to doing it. This has a radius fretboard so we're going to run this wire through my little radius bender here. I made this myself from things here in the shop. The thing about this is I, it doesn't have a crank on it like most of them. I just run it through like this and I have no problem with it running through there at all. Maybe I don't, you know, I don't take as much of a, a bend at a time as other people do, but uh, you can see it's already starting to bend it, and uh, you know, so I just crank it down a little bit and then run it back through again, and it. I'm doing it in a very awkward way here for the camera, <laughs> but uh, but it's very simple, and you can pull it easier than you can push it actually, but. Uh, push it through you start pushing it through and then you just pull it right on through and you can see there's a nice nice radius and I didn't feel like I needed a crank at all just did a nice job there this one does leave the very ends a little bit straight but not very bad there's it's pretty close to the end and it it seems to bend it pretty good but you know, if I would have been thinking, I probably would have put them a little closer together. Of course, that just makes it a little harder to pull, push through there and bend it, too, when you do that. This little jig here for mandolins is the perfect jig for putting frets in. It get, you know, I've got two holes here where I can put the clamps in two different places. There's leather between here and there, so the, and I've got leather on my clamp, by the way, too. But I can clamp it down, get it really solid. That way when I'm driving, I'm driving into solid wood. It just works good. There's no, it puts no stress anywhere on the neck. 
and I've got leather back under the body of the instrument back here and I'll even put a little more leather in there when I get to these frets here so that it's it's supported really well too but right now I don't bother with that until I get down there again for the camera it makes this makes it a little bit awkward but I I'm doing working a little bit awkward way I just clip them off like that and I've got my nippers here take my nippers and just nip the ends off I've got my leather working mallet here which really does a good job it's plastic jaws and I just start by tapping the far end in and I will say that that is not fitting as good as I want it to. It probably this probably needs a little bit more bend on it. So I'm gonna run it through here a little bit more. I may pull this one. It's not fitting real tight, and that's what's bothering me. It it's uh, the ends are coming up. It feels like the tang this tang is smaller than the tang that was in there, and that's that's not good. I don't like that. Try another one here. This one's got a little more bend on it. So I may have to glue these frets in, which kind of sucks, but we'll do what we have to do to get it done. Yeah, this slot is just awful big. I can probably press them down in there with my fingers. If you wonder what we're nipping off there, you can see that little edge there because the the top of the fret has to extend out over the binding and that's the reason we're nipping that off that's looking pretty good and then you just take your end nippers and nip off the part that's sticking out so we got quite a bit more of that to do not going to show the whole thing but uh there is a chance we're going to have to come back and glue the ends down at least on some of these. Which I don't like, but we have to do what we have to do. Once I get down so far, it makes it a little easier on me because I get this clamp out of my way, get it up back up here. got all the frets replaced and ordinarily I would call that done but to be perfectly honest I'm not happy with it because the slots that were there were pretty big slots and driving these little frets down in there they didn't get real tight especially on the ends even though I had them radius and probably could have radius them some more that would help a little bit more but I don't think that would even hold them down enough so I'm gonna go through and glue all these. It's a real tedious process. I don't like doing that, but it's gotta be done. I've already taken a dropper like this, put glue along the ends of this. I've given it a few seconds to set up, and, and I'm gonna spritz it with the accelerator so that I don't have to sit here and hold it forever. And we're just going to go down through there and do that to every single one of them. The only thing is, I'm probably going to make me a special little tool that'll hold down both ends with just one hand. Because this is, this is awkward holding down these two things on both ends like this. It's not a very good way to do it. So I'm going to make me a little specialty tool. So I'll make that tool and bring it back and show you what I made. That does a real nice job of holding down the fret. I put a little bit of a radius on there. It holds the ends down, which is what I really need. As you can see we glued in all of the frets and you know it makes a real nasty looking job at the beginning but you know we will go through and clean all that up 
at least now when we level and recrown them and everything, they'll all stay put instead of bouncing up and down, you know. So it just is what it is. It just needed to be done. I might add that my little tool was worth its weight in gold for holding those down while the accelerator dried the glue. That kept them pushed down in there really good. I would recommend making something like that if you need to do something similar. I think that's about all I'm going to do there. We're going to fill that and dye that rest of that black and uh, I think that'll do good. We lowered this down a little bit too because it was even a little bit high. Okay, now we're going to, I'm not going to worry about this yet. I'm going to work on the fretboard now on the frets, get them knocked down. The ends are real sharp right at the moment. Right away I can tell that, that uh, gluing them down was the right way to go. I don't hear them chattering now, where I did hear them chattering like crazy before. Pretty much settled on 320 first and then 600. That really does a nice job. So after you really rubber down good with the 320, then you take a little bit of 600 and go back over it, and that really makes it slick. You, the 320, you'd probably be fine with just stopping there, but the 600 just makes it slick. Now we got to deal with the glue mess and the top of the fretboard. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to tackle that. I'm hoping the razor blade by itself will do it, but maybe not. Yeah, it looks like that might just do it. I may not have to do any more than that. I thought I might have to do a special scraping to get rid of the glue, but it looks like this is going to take it off. Well, we got the strings on the Michael Kelly, and in my opinion, this is a very poorly set up nut. And the reason is that there's almost the same distance between every string. You know, the, the, these two pairs ought to be a little closer together, a little bit more of a gap between the G's and the D's. The, G, the D's should be a little closer together, and then a gap between the, you know. So in other words, it, there should be some spacing there that you can see. I mean, when you look at this, it's confusing as heck. When you just look at it real close, there's no spacing difference at all, really, to speak of. And in my opinion, that's not good at all. So I'm going to try to respace them a little bit as I set the height. They, they are just a little bit high. They're not real high, but I'm going to try to salvage the nut that's there rather than make a new one because that's another full hour's job at least. And the nut doesn't change the sound very much at all, if any. Well, best laid plans of mice and men. I just don't think I can salvage it. It's just too poorly made and I have to move the strings too far. Most of the time I can scoot them a little bit, but these have to be scooted a long ways. And so I'm just going to make a new nut. It'll play much better. It's just really bad. About the, one of the worst factory nuts I believe I've ever seen, really. We'll go get us, I'll make me a new blank this size. That'll save a little time. 
having this to use to measure with. I didn't show making the nut, but I did make a brand new nut for it. And now you can see that the strings are spread out. They actually look like four pairs of strings rather than eight individual strings. Now, hope that makes a difference, or hope you can see that difference there. It's a big difference. It's got to make it a lot easier to play up here. Now, the only other thing I, that I feel like is left to do is to sh round these off. They're very sharp edges on this. So we're just going to take and round off or 45 all these corners. And after that, I think we're good. It's set up with very low action. This is a Michael Kelly. Let me read the model number to you. Model MKLDFE and then a space AVS. It's a fairly nicely made mandolin. We put a new tailpiece on it. We worked on the bridge area here a little bit. We scalloped this out a little bit more, put all new frets in it, lower frets, put a new nut on it. And I think it's up in very good shape now. Uh, set the action as low as we could get it. You know, recrowned the frets, got them all good and level and all that. I set the intonation as close as I can get it. It's uh, with that, with the wire going down through there, you can't move it much. So, but it's, it, but the intonation's actually pretty darn good on it. I was kind of impressed how good the intonation was. Plays really, really, really easy. Um, the frets feel pretty good, and everything just you know it's real nice. You can see here that at the seventh fret it holds the holds the pick no problem, and uh, that's very low because that's just that high off the fretboard. <laughs> so and yet it doesn't buzz at all, and you can hear me getting on it. There. So when you get them set up that tight, they play like a dream. I hope the customer will be very happy. If this is your first time here, please click that subscribe button. Please click the thumbs up. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching.